December 2nd, 1988, uh, Mike Warner, Kathy Schwartz's fiance, uh, came home from work and found her murdered. He found her daughter, Courtney Schwartz, uh, unharmed in a separate bedroom. Uh, he went to a neighboring apartment to call police. Uh, from there, our officers responded to the scene, confirmed her death, and then secured it. Uh, the detectives were called in along with a crime scene, uh, crime text from the Michigan State Police Crime Lab out of Grand Rapids to process it for evidence. Uh, inside the apartment, the evidence technicians located one fingerprint, one fingerprint in blood on a telephone in her bedroom uh, that was not associated to Kathy's friends or family. Uh, at that time, DNA was in its infancy, uh, so they're only able to do blood typing uh, to eliminate a suspect. Uh, also located in the apartment was a footprint. Uh, over time, thousands of footprints and fingerprints were taken with no match. Uh, the fingerprint was the fifth one entered into the automated fingerprint identification system in Michigan. Uh, and at that time, we thought we would get a match uh, with this new technology. Uh, still nothing. Uh, in 2012, our now retired Detective Sergeant Mike Mooney was contacted about the blood sample that was found on the telephone um, and enter, entered that into the combined DNA index system, or CODIS as it's called, uh, to see if we could get a match from that. Uh, that was entered in in 2012, and again, we had no match from the DNA or the fingerprint. Um, in May of 2022, uh, we were contacted by the Michigan State Police Forensic Lab in Grand Rapids. Uh, they were, they had a cold case grant uh, for doing familial genetic genealogy or FGG and they were offering to run the Kathy Schwartz case through FGG testing through their cold case grant. We met with our prosecutor Dave Schwartz, or I'm sorry, Dave Marvin who was on board and the sample was sent in to Othram uh, out of Texas for testing. Uh, in January of 2023, we received the FGG report back from Othram and it identified one family that used to live in Michigan, uh, the children of John and Judith Waters. Uh, we quickly eliminated one brother who already had his DNA in CODIS, so we were able to eliminate him. From there, uh, Detective Sergeant Peterson and I made contact with the two brothers that still lived in Michigan, obtained their DNA, and were able to eliminate them uh, as suspects. We were also able to submit their DNA back to Othram, who told us positively that you were in the right family. Uh, this, the suspect is 100% sibling of the brothers that you had tested so far, so that we knew that we were in the right family. Uh, and that only left uh, Mr. Robert Waters, uh, who lived in Beaufort, South Carolina. Uh, in April, we made contact with the Beaufort Police Department and Investigator Nicole Anderson uh, was assigned to assist us in this case. Uh, with Investigator Anderson's assistance, we obtained search warrants for Robert Waters' DNA, fingerprints, and footprints. On April 30th, Chief Bowling and I, along with detectives from the Michigan State Police, and with assistance of the officers and detectives from the Beaufort Police Department, we made contact with Robert Waters at his residence in Beaufort. He was brought in for collection of the DNA, fingerprints, and footprints. Uh, fingerprint examiners from the Michigan State Police Grand Rapids Lab uh, assisted us and they confirmed that Mr. Waters' fingerprint did match the fingerprint found on the phone. Uh, it was at that time we submitted our warrant request to Prosecutor Dave Marvin, and he authorized the complaint against Robert Waters for the murder of Kathy Schwartz. Uh, Waters was taken into custody by officers from Beaufort and then lodged at the Beaufort County Jail. Uh, Waters' DNA and footprint were then transported back here to Michigan, where we took them up to the Grand Rapids lab for testing. And I can tell you that examiners confirmed that water's DNA and footprint match those found at the scene.